dinosaurs. They were inhabitants of the Earth millions of years ago. And we know about them now from fossils and by looking at the landscapes that they used to live in. And using all that knowledge and a little bit of creativity, we can make these. Excellent. OK, not quite the real thing, a little bit smaller and slightly plastic. But even so, we can find out about dinosaur adaptations by looking at these replicas. Before I ask you about adaptations, have a look at the dinosaurs and see what features you particularly notice. It may seem puzzling to people, what is it that scientists do? Um, in fact, it may seem to be a very difficult thing that they do. But actually, what they do is use their common sense. And what I do, I'm a scientist, is look at the world around me and try to understand how it works. Um, so looking at a, a skeleton of a dinosaur or a model of a dinosaur, you can see certain features like sharp teeth or a long neck. Um, these students were doing just that and they were using their common sense to try to interpret what they may have been for. Now some of these features, if not all of them that we've talked about, are adaptations. So adaptations are features that help the animal fit into its environment. They give it an advantage. What did we notice? Um, there's a lump on its head, so maybe it could ah. be used for swinging down and hitting other objects. So it could be a bit of a battering ram, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Yes? All right, what else? What did you um, notice? I think I noticed the long neck, yes. maybe, for... Um, if there's quite high leaves in the trees, then it could eat them. The definite advantage for getting to the leaves that other dinosaurs can't reach. Yeah? yeah? Excellent. When the students looked at the Brachiosaurus model, they made a couple of observations. Um, the lump on the head and the long neck. So the suggestion was that maybe the uh, animals could somehow bang into each other using that uh, lump on the head, which looks a bit like a helmet. However, when you look at the specimens in detail, you discover that the bone there is actually quite thin. So probably they wouldn't be using that to bash each other, because otherwise the bone would have been much thicker. What it was for is still quite uncertain, though. But the other um, key aspect was the long neck, and, and I think there they got it spot on, because the hypothesis was this allowed those dinosaurs to reach very high in the trees um, to get at leaves that other animals couldn't reach. What have you noticed? Um, I've noticed there's quite like bumpy bits here. Ridges on the back. Mm. Yep. And he else? I've noticed that there's very sharp teeth, which would come in handy for like eating a lot of meat. Okay, so good meat-eating teeth here. Yep. Big jaws too, it's right? Got, like big claws, legs. But it has very small hands. So mm. Little wiggly hands. <laughs> Mainly need a thumb for that. <laughs> yes, it does. Tyrannosaurus rex, T-Rex, is one of the most famous dinosaurs and everybody is fascinated by how it would live. It was very massive, it weighed about five or six tons um, and the model gave rise to a lot of discussion about the teeth and the arms and the legs. So clearly um, the observation by one of the students that T-Rex has got big sharp teeth and therefore it was probably a meat eater is a very obvious uh, one. And all the evidence would seem to support that by comparison with modern animals and even there are fossils that show tooth marks of T-Rex on pieces of bone from other dinosaurs, so that confirms the hypothesis. It's got this little extra um, claw on it. Oh yes. If in case it's falling over, you can, it can prop itself up. Good for balance. Now I like the way that you're already thinking about not just the features, but also why they might give it an advantage, how the feature might help it. So that really is thinking like a scientist. So when the students were looking at the Allosaurus model, they were noticing the claw on the back of the leg, and it was suggested this was maybe for propping or, or balancing somehow. Probably that's not a good hypothesis, because in fact the claw doesn't reach the ground. It's a very short toe on the back of the leg. And so it's more likely that it may have been used in fighting. It, it was quite sharp, and they could have swiped at each other with their back legs, just as some uh, fighting birds do today. In looking at these features of dinosaurs, we've been thinking about adaptation. What were these teeth for? What was that long neck for? 
But uh, there's more to it, of course. We also have to ask a question of where did these adaptations come from? To get a good understanding of evolution, you need to understand variation and natural selection. Now, variation is really easy. It just means that individuals within a population, and that might be plants or animals, are all different from each other. They all vary. And you can see that just looking around you at different human faces. Everybody's face is different. Everybody is unique. It's not just faces, we're different on the inside as well as on the outside. And it's not just humans that are different to each other. Look closely and you'll see that each one is slightly different to the rest. Hmm, maybe you're puzzling right now as to see how, but look really closely. Okay, that's variation. What about natural selection? What does it mean? Let me see. Can I find a way to explain it? Suppose there's a population of horse-like animals and they're living on grassy plains. But suppose these horse-like animals have teeth that are small and not great at grinding tough, coarse grass. The animals can survive if they can find soft fruit to eat, but without fruit, they tend to go hungry. Now, suppose it just so happens that some of the animals in the group have teeth at the back, molar teeth, that are taller and have ridges. These animals find that they can use their ridged molars to grind the tough grass. The animals that have these ridges on their teeth are more likely to survive than some of the other animals. And if they're more likely to survive, they're more likely to have offspring. OK, so animals with ridged teeth are more likely to have offspring than animals with small teeth. Why does that matter? Some things can be inherited by offspring from their parents. So if having ridged teeth is something that can be inherited, then the offspring of the horsey animals that have tall ridged teeth are also likely to have tall ridged teeth. And over many, many, many generations, we end up with more and more animals with more and more tall ridged teeth. So here's where it gets really impressive. These little changes keep on happening generation after generation and gradually they add up. After many, many thousands of generations, we're seeing animals that now look quite different. This is now a new species of animal, and this is how a new species can come to exist. <laughs>